In this video, we're going to look at empirical and molecular formulas and start to learn a little bit about them. We've talked about empirical formulas before, uh, but let's kind of go through and do a little refresher. So let's look at these compounds. You notice that they all have different formulas, but you may notice some things in common. We'll talk about those in a minute. So they all have what are called different molecular formulas. The molecular formula is the formula that tells you how many of each type of atom are in a molecule. So you can see that different numbers of carbons and hydrogens are in those particular compounds. But when you look at those and look at the similarities, you probably notice that they have the same what we call empirical formula a ratio of carbon to hydrogen of 1 to 2. So they have the same elements and then they are in the same ratio. So they have the same empirical formula, that lowest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. You probably remember hearing that from the uh, point in the semester when we talked about ionic compounds. So we can't, in an ionic compound, remember that we've got that repeating crystal lattice structure of atoms. We can't really count the number of atoms in a compound when it's ionic. And so we use that empirical formula to tell us the ratio of the atoms that are in that compound. And mathematically, we can figure out the empirical formula fairly easily. The molecular formula is a little bit more of a challenge. So let's take a look at how we can figure out the empirical formula. Usually it's not too bad. What we have to do is take the amounts of each of the element, uh, elements in the compound and convert those amounts to moles of those elements. And then we'll divide by the smallest number of moles to get to the simplest ratio. And then we may end up with a, a fraction or a decimal, so then we'll adjust the ratio to get the lowest whole number ratio. And this is a really simple way to remember. It's called a simple rhyme for a simple formula. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply till whole. You will want to know this because this is the easiest way to remember the steps to figure out the empirical formula. So let's take a look at a practice problem. So here's what a problem might look like. So go ahead and read through. You can see that the problem is asking us to find the empirical formula. So we'll want to use our little rhyme. So the first step says percent to mass. If you notice, our problem already has masses in it, so we can skip that step. Our second step is mass to moles. So we just want to take the masses of each of these uh, elements and we're going to convert those to moles. So let's go ahead and start with our sodium. We know that we've got 32.38 grams of sodium and we're going to go ahead and just set up a factor label just like we did in the mole unit. So grams of sodium on the bottom, moles of sodium on top, and we know that one mole of sodium has a molar mass of 22.99 grams. And when I put that in my calculator I just get one, one 0.408 moles of sodium. And then it, my next step will be to do the same thing for sulfur, so 22.65 grams of sulfur, and then grams of sulfur on the bottom, moles of sulfur on the top, and one mole of sulfur has 32.07 grams, and when I put that in my calculator I get 0.7063 moles of sulfur. And then my last one's going to be oxygen, and that is 44.9 grams, 99 grams, sorry. And we're going to go ahead and convert that to moles, so grams of oxygen on the bottom, moles of oxygen on the top. One mole of oxygen gives us 16.00 grams of oxygen. And when I calculate that, I get 2.812 moles of oxygen. Now, if you're looking at the conversion for oxygen and saying, now wait a minute, I thought oxygen was diatomic. It should have a mass of 32 grams. Remember that oxygen is diatomic only when it is not in a compound with other elements. 
just when it's by itself. And you can see that this is in a compound with sulfur and sodium, so it's not going to be diatomic. It can be a different number of atoms in that compound. So our next step from our rhyme is uh, divide by small. So what we want to do is look for the smallest number of moles, and you can see that the moles of sulfur are the smallest. And we're going to divide each of those by that number, so 1.408 moles of sodium. And we're going to divide by 0 0.7063 moles of sulfur. And that's going to give us 1.99 moles of Na per mole of sulfur. And if you look, that's almost 2. We can go ahead in this case and round it to 2. And the reason is because we know we're going to have whole numbers. Now we'll, we'll talk about when to round and when not to round. So that's going to be 2 moles of Na per mole of S. And then we're going to just do the same thing for our 2.812 moles of oxygen. Just divide by our moles of sulfur. And then we're going to put that in our calculators. And I got for that 3.98 moles of oxygen per mole of sulfur. And again, very, very close to a whole number. So we're going to round that to mol 4 moles of oxygen per mole of sulfur. Now, if we divided 0 0.7063 by itself, it would be 1. So what we've done is we've determined that we've got this ratio of sodium to sulfur to oxygen of 2 moles of sodium to 1 mole of sulfur and then 4 moles of oxygen to 1 mole of sulfur. And so those become our subscripts for our empirical formula. So it is Na2SO4. And that's it. That's your answer. So uh, if you have questions about this, we can talk about it in class. Let's look at another example. So take just a minute to read through this problem. All right, so again, we're being asked to find the empirical formula. This one's a little different. Instead of having the masses in the problem, it's got percent. So we're going to have to do that first step. All right, so looking at it gives us the percent of potassium and the percent of chromium. Then it says the remainder is, ox uh, uh, the remainder is oxygen. So it doesn't give us the percent of oxygen. So think about how you could find that. I hope that you're thinking, okay, if I just subtract those other two percents from 100, that those will become, that those will give me the percent of oxygen. So the percents uh, would have to add up to 100. And if you take 100 and subtract 26.56 and 35.41, your percent of oxygen should be 38.03%. All right, so just a little step in there. So let's talk about what we do with those percents. There's not really a way to convert those directly to moles, but uh, there's not a quick and easy way to make it into masses. If we knew how much of the compound we had, we could figure out the grams of the sample. Now the nice thing about a problem like this is we can pick out any sample size to use. 5,862 grams, whatever. Most people find that the easiest sample size to use is 100 grams. If we have 100 grams of the sample, then 26.56% of 100 grams would be 26.56 grams. So let's assume that we have a 100 gram sample. And I would just write a little reminder in your notes so that you know to do that step. And then those percents just become our masses. So we've got 26.56 grams of potassium. We've got chromium. There are 35.41 grams of chromium. And then for oxygen, it's going to be 38.03 grams. Okay, so that's our percent to mass step. 
And then our next step is mass to mole, so just like the other problem that we just did. So with mass to moles, we're going to do, uh, we've got grams of potassium, so we need grams of potassium on the bottom, moles of potassium on the top. We know that one mole of potassium has a molar mass of 39.10 grams. And when you put that in your calculator, you get 0 0.6793 moles of potassium. And I hope you're stopping at each of these steps and doing the calculations yourself to make sure that you understand how to get the numbers that I'm getting. So here we've got grams of chromium. So we're going to put grams of chromium on the bottom to cancel, moles of chromium on the top. When you look at your reference table, one mole of chromium is equal to 51.99 grams of chromium. And if you put that in your calculator, you end up with 0.6811 moles of chromium. And then the last one is oxygen. And again, the step of grams of oxygen on the bottom, moles of oxygen on the top. One mole of oxygen has 16.00 grams of oxygen. And remember, it's not O2, it's in a compound. When you put that in your calculator, you should get 2.377 moles of oxygen. All right, so our next step is going to be uh, divide by small. So looking at your formula, we're going to have to figure out uh, which is the smallest, and I think that that's the moles of potassium. So we're going to take our moles of chromium, 0.6811 moles of chromium, and we're going to divide by our moles of potassi potassium, 0 0.6793. And when you put that in your calculator, that gives you 1.003 moles of chromium per mole of potassium. So that's about one mole of chromium per mole of potassium. Then we're going to do the same thing here with our 2.377 moles of oxygen. We're going to divide by 0 0.6793 moles of potassium. And that gives you 3.499 moles of oxygen per mole of potassium. Now, looking at this, it is tempting to say, oh, we'll just round that. But we don't really want to round it up. It needs to be very, very close to a whole number before we can round. We can't round that one to a whole number. It's not a 3 to 1 ratio or a 4 to 1 ratio. It's actually about a, a 3.5 to 1 ratio. So when we have this, the way to think about this is we've got this ratio of K to CR to O of 1 to 1 to 3.5. So think about how you might be able to turn these into whole numbers, all of them. What we want to do is just take a step. We can't uh, use that decimal, so we're going to multiply by 2. So we'll get a ratio of 2 to 2 to 7. And that means that our empirical formula will be K2 cr 2 7 Don't forget that little step of writing the empirical formula, okay? Let's take a look at how to know about what to do when you are handed a number that is not extremely close to a whole number. So sometimes you have to adjust. So when you get something that ends in a 0.5, hopefully you see that that's 1 half. So if we multiply by 2, that turns it into a whole number. If you have something that ends in 0.33 or 0.66, that's one-third and two-thirds. So think of those decimals as fractions. So we can multiply those by three. And then if you have 0.25 or 0.75, that's one-quarter. 0.75 is three-quarters, so we can multiply by four. And then you can end up with 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or 0.8. If you notice, those are one-fifth, two-fifth, three-fifths, and four-fifths. So you can multiply those by five. And that's why you carry the digits. 
because otherwise you can end up with a problem in rounding and you can see that 0.75 and 0.8 are really close to each other. So let's take a look at another problem and see if we can figure this one out. Okay, so isoamyl acetate is a compound of, that helps give bananas their unique smell and it gives us the percent. See if you can go ahead and start to set this one up. If you're not sure what to do, go ahead and start watching the video, but if you reach a point where you think you know what to do, give it a try on your own. That's really important when you're watching these videos to make sure you're giving everything a try on your own when I ask you to. All right, so let's go ahead and set this one up. So for carbon, I've got 64.58. Remember that this is percent, so we're gonna go percent to mass. And remember that we're going to assume a 100 gram sample. So if we have 100 grams of our isoamyl acetate, it would give us 64.58 grams of carbon. We're gonna convert that from grams of carbon to moles of carbon using our molar mass of carbon. So grams on the bottom, moles on the top. One mole is 12.01 grams. And when you put that in your calculator, you should end up with 5.377 moles of oxid I'm sorry moles of carbon and then we've got 10.84 moles of hydrogen sorry grams of hydrogen And then we've got 10.84 grams of hydrogen. So same step here, just convert from grams of hydrogen, so grams of hydrogen on the top, to moles of hydrogen. Grams of hydrogen on the bottom, moles of hydrogen on top. One mole of hydrogen is equal to 1.008 grams. So if you divide that through, that gives you 10.75 moles of hydrogen. And then our last one is oxygen, so 24.58 grams of oxygen. And then grams of oxygen on the bottom, moles of oxygen on the top, and we know that one mole of oxygen is equal to 16.00 grams. And when we multiply that out in our calculators, we should get 1.5 three six grams of oxygen. So that's our mass to mole step. Then our next step is to divide by small. So we've got 5.377 moles of carbon and we're going to divide by 1.536 moles, I'm sorry, um, moles of oxygen. Got a little typo there. And that gives us, when we put that in our calculators, 3.500 moles of carbon per mole of oxygen. And then we do the same thing with the hydrogen, so it's 10.75 moles of hydrogen. And that's going to be divided by 1.536 moles of oxygen. And when I put that in my calculator, I get 7. 0, 0 moles of hydrogen per mole of oxygen. And then we're going to use that to set up that ratio. And we've got a ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen of 3.5 to 7 to 1. So uh, that's our multiply to whole step. We've got a number that's not a whole number here. And so we need to multiply those numbers by another number to make sure that they're whole numbers. And so I hope you're looking at this and saying, I'm going to multiply that by 2. And that's going to be a ratio of 7 to 14 to 2. So don't forget to multiply all of them. And those whole numbers become our subscripts for our empirical formula. Don't forget to write that because that's the correct answer for the question. So carbon 7, hydrogen 14, O2. And one thing you may have a question about is the order. Write them in the order I give them to you in the problem, and that way you'll have them in the correct order for the formula. 
All right, we'll talk about this in class, and I look forward to your questions. Thanks.